life in general for Chueli, maybe uh, lots of people sitting here wondering where is Chueli at the moment. After the rugby career and um, after 2001, the name trying to start to fade away. But uh, to be here, staying, living here in New Zealand and uh, living here in Auckland, calling Pukekoe as home, I probably most of you have happened to be in, uh, have been visit uh, Pukekoe. That's probably the, what they call in New Zealand the capital of all the potatoes and onions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been st uh, living there since 1994. I've been uh, moved away from there. And um, to be here tonight, it's a privilege and it's an honor to come and, uh, and share uh, things that have happened to my life and to my family since I left uh, Fiji in 1994. People might ask, uh, why did you come to New Zealand in 1994? I was playing for Fiji in 1994, touring New Zealand. And uh, uh, if you are a rugby career and rugby, rugby follower, back then uh, a name called Luke Ernavula. He was playing for counties and also a trellis for the uh, New Zealand All Blacks. Uh, we met in, uh, in Hong Kong in 94. He was playing for Fiji, I was playing for the New Zealand Sevens. And he said that uh, he's going to leave uh, uh, counties rugby and uh, going to play league in Australia. Back then, there's a club called North Sydney Bears. That's uh, when I make a decision to leave uh, Fiji and pursue a career in rugby here in Auckland, New Zealand. And I'm still here in Auckland, New Zealand. <laughs> and I call it at home. And uh, to move further, people might ask what happened during a career. Um, I uh, had an illness. Yeah, in 2000, um, in 97 to the same year, uh, they contracted a, car, a kidney disease in, in my, uh, for me. And that uh, year too, I was playing rugby at the top level here in New Zealand, but I already have a kidney disease. Once, uh, the great old black coach, John Hart, always say, there's two big wingers, they only play for one kidney. We share that kidney because we have the problem, but we still play rugby. And in 2001, that's where the, the disease catch up. And uh, I tell you, I have to hang my boots. That week when they told me that uh, I'm not gonna be able to play rugby anymore, that was a very hard week for me. People might ask why, because I was on top of my career. And uh, I was enjoying playing in that level. And when that happened, I don't have the answer for it. And uh, if you go to uh, uh, Middlemore Hospital, you ask the nurses and the doctors there, that first few months, they hate my guts. <laughs> because that doesn't sink in, my, in me what happened. And uh, about six, eight months, then they realize this is life. I have to move on. And at the moment, if you go again to oh, Middlemore Hospital, what's the doctors and nurses that look after the, the dialysis? They are all, all, all my good friends now. Yeah, that's, that's where I start. Then I have to, to move forward from that. And uh, took over from Jonah when Jonah uh, passed as a, a kidney ambassador here in New Zealand. I have to visit um, hospitals, have to visit houses, and try to encourage these young kids. Myself and us sitting out here probably enjoy life and what hurts me a lot when uh, I went to houses and see these young kids, five years old, six years old. They have life in front of them, but they can't do anything. 
because of the disease. And we might sitting here, you enjoy what you love to do in this world. And these young kids, when I go and visit them, it hurts me a lot because they have a life in front of them and they can't do that anymore because of this disease. I remember one young lady down in Christchurch. They have to take the two kidney off and survive on a machine and survive on a dialysis machine. If not, that's the end of his life. So, as I say, I'm here in, uh, in, uh, in Auckland, that's my home now. And I'm saying that I'm very privileged and honored to be here tonight and share you this story. So you might know where, what Joel is doing at the moment. I, um, when I was dialyzed too, I, um, I coached a little bit. I coached for my club, we call rugby club. And I also coached the county sevens team. When I took over in um, 2005, counties was uh, ranked 12 national. So I pulled them up to be ranked second before I, fear I finished my coaching career down in counties. And I still want to pursue that. But at the moment, I'm taking step by step till 2015 on the 28th of May. 2015, I got a call early morning, about three o'clock in the morning, to rush to Oakland Hospital for a donor. That was early morning, and I was lucky that um, that morning my mom was was lying beside me. Three o'clock in the morning, she always wake up. And that's the time for her to pray. And woke me up. Said, son, there's a phone ringing. I woke up and said, who, who, who want to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I went back to sleep. The phone goes again. She woke me up again. Saw the, the number, and I knew straight away it was my... my transplant doctor. I messaged him, he called back, and he said, can you be at the Oakland Hospital at five o'clock in the morning? For me, going to Oakland Hospital was no worries at five o'clock in the morning. The only thing I was worried about that morning, where to drop mom. I couldn't leave him alone at home. But going back, my church members and us, we were praying for it, for a miracle. I can say that. And people at home missed me a lot because I couldn't go back to see them, my nephews. my. So they were supporting in prayer. And to go back before that, I, I think it was 2000 and 11, I had the same incident too at Oakland Hospital, and mom was there. But that year, I had to pull out of, I was in bed at Oakland Hospital, ready to go, and I had to pull out because mom was crying beside my bed. And I didn't blame her because that's, no one has, sit down and talk to, to her about what's the procedure. What I have to go through inside the theater. And in her mind, that's probably the last time we're gonna see each other. And I was sharing this with Sharon. So I had to pull up. We went home. Took me that three or four years to sit down with her, explain everything to her. Doctors involved, nurses involved, people around me involved. And she started to understand it. 
when they call her up in the morning, she said, what are you waiting for? Are we going to go? Because they're already thinking to her, that's what's going to happen. So lucky that night, when I call our senior pastor's wife, if mom can come and stay at the house for the morning, but she's a nurse. I'm supposed to walk that morning, and she said, it just happened at about 12 o'clock midnight. I rang middle more hospital that I'm not coming to work in the morning. So everything was planned. And I thank God for that. Went in, she was ready, hopping the car, straight to Oakland Hospital. When I arrived there, everybody was at the reception waiting for me. Straight to level seven, I think, in uh, Oakland Hospital. Every doctor said everybody was there. They test my blood, test the tissues and everything, and I was waiting for the for the doctor to be there. When she come back, when he came back and see me, he said uh, everything is going good. By the time they do the testing for myself and all that, there's a set of doctors to uh, doing the testing for the kidney that have to go, you know, the, the, the kidney that they receive. Everything has to be a match. Because for me, I'm an O positive. I can only give, but I can't receive any other, any other type of blood. I can only give to A positive or A negative, or B positive or B, but I, I can only receive O positive, nobody else. So that morning was a nice match. To cut things short, after that one, about a month I was in the hospital. And uh, doctors saw that nothing happening. Huh? I was sore stomach, and uh, that's what happened to me. So we went to, uh, they put us in a, a motel and stay there for two weeks. And I, ha I have to rush back to the hospital because the whole part of my stomach was sore. So they came back and there's a, a, um, a specialist came from Canada, was there, happened to be there at the hospital. And he just poked my tummy. And he said, there's something wrong with you. The uh, urine is not coming up. It was all over my tummy. So about uh, on the, I think it was on the 24th of June, six o'clock in the morning, I had to rush me back to the inside the theater. That um, Canadian doctor has to another cut my tummy again. They found out the connection that go to my new kidney was leaking. So they cut again like a, um, probably a, a plumber here somewhere. <laughs> like a, a plumber doing that, uh, that uh, thing for the, for the pipe. That's what happened. So they cut the thing again, redid it again. And that's why I'm standing here in front of you guys talking about that. And uh, when I was got told to be here, I'm happy to share the story. So the people follow my rugby back then know where I am today. And now I'm enjoying the uh, thing of being a, don uh, a donor. And I'm en enjoying, um, I've been, and at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm a, a, I'm a um, ambassador of a program running in the Fiji at the moment called Quick Rip. People might ask why, because back then, when in the older age, back home in Fiji, people um, contract with the, uh, diabetes and all that on the older age, about 60. 17 years old, 50 years old. But at the moment, it's really bad back home. 
five, six year old are doing that. And it's getting worse. And it's one of the worst in the Pacific at the moment. So, uh, New Zealand rugby, New Zealand government, and Sports Pacific in partnership with the Fiji rugby, the Fiji government for this program. So I have to uh, flow over in Fiji and introduce this, this, um, this program, which is not only with sports, but also with the healthy. So there is a, um, uh, uh, like a program with it too. When the kids come to play, we have to give them and take it home. It's not only for the kids, it's also for the parents and the whole family and the whole community. When they approached me to do that, I was very happy because there's a way for me to give back home. And I'm really enjoying it, not only in the main island. I've traveled through Honolulu and the interior of Honolulu, introducing this program. And we just came back from uh, about two weeks ago. We went straight to Kandahar Island. And at the moment, we're waiting to go to the Lao Group. Lao Group is probably the hardest one to go through because the islands are so separate from each other. So we have to visit that. And I thank you all standing here, uh, sitting down here uh, in front of me, because that's your money where I had to happen to go and help people back home to enjoy life. Being back there, I remember in 2007, I was supposed to do something in Fiji. And I rang home. I rang the, my friend who's a doctor in Fiji. What's the cost? of dialysis in Fiji. So, and I can see there, people sitting here, the minds start walking. Do the calculation and all that, right? Or $600 on, for three hours. And that's true. I said, by paying my fare going with the $600, I'd rather send that money. That's what I do, what's that happen? And I feel, I know, very, for the people back home, most of my friends uh, passed because of the kidney problem. And they couldn't afford to do that. And that's where, at the moment, there's a planning, and that's where I'm heading at the moment too. So I can help people back home, get the machine, and do what's happening here in New Zealand, you know, for free dialysis and all that. As we introduced the, this program back home, that's one, we found, one thing we found out over there. Home, people are passed because of that. So I've, I hope there's more time to go, but you only have a 15 minutes, so I can uh, tell you here what's happening and what's, I'm doing, what I'm doing at the moment, not only for my life, not only for my family, but the people back in Fiji so that they can enjoy life with each other, with the family and all that. But as we're here with only 15 minutes. So thank you very much for your time to be here today and in support of this program. Kunaka.